It's time for Windows Weekly Jam Packed Show for you. Uh, we, Of course, Windows 8.1 came out this morning. We have an install guide for you from Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. The ins, the outs, the ups and downs, what to watch out for, the pitfalls. Also joining us, though, Greg Sullivan, who he's the director of Windows Phone at Microsoft, and he'll talk about GDR3 and a whole lot more. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 333, recorded October 17th, 2013. Windows 8.1 is here. Windows Weekly is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the Internet the way it should be, anonymously and unfiltered. For 20% off on your new account, go to ProXPN.com slash twit and use the offer code WW20. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers your Microsoft needs, and today is a very big day, a red-letter day. We've been doing this episode 333, so we've been doing this show for roughly six years. In that time, in those six years, only 37 different versions of Windows have come out. So it's very exciting when a new version of Windows comes out. It's a it's a once every few months. No, no, this is a big deal. This is the fourth Windows release since we started the podcast. Can you believe that? We started, it was Vista? Yep. And then Vista had not yet come out. Good Lord. We were we started the show in the XP era. If you want to hear some quiet desperation, listen to me talking about Vista before that piece of crap ship. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Okay. Wow. Wowie, wowie. <laughs> so, so really, God, Bob, we've been doing this a long time. It's kind of cool, actually, if I think about it. Uh, yep. So here we are, Windows 8.1. I thought, I, may, I misunderstood. I thought it was the 18th. In fact, I didn't check until Leo, I saw that Microsoft blog post this morning. I said, whoa. Yeah, listen, I, I had a, a back and forth with someone from Microsoft PR yesterday that encompassed 17 emails. And the only thing I wanted explained was the difference between the 17th and the 18th and when this was really going to be released and how time zones work and where the sun comes up and it's over <laughs> Australia. I swear to God, like... <laughs> this is surprisingly complex. Yeah. So, well, so we, when we talked about this, actually, we did talk about it that way. I think I remember we had this conversation then when they announced it. So it was the 18th in the in New Zealand is when it came out. Except not really, right? I no, mean, if you think not about yet. it, seven o'clock in the morning Eastern Standard Time is not tomorrow, right? In New Zealand, I don't think. So I'll, here's here's how I think of it, just to simplify matters. Yes. And I'm speaking purely from the viewpoint of someone in the United States, which I know drives some people insane. Yes, I apologize. because we have many listeners outside the U.S. I, I apologize. But from here, from my perspective here in the U.S., um, the, the electronic versions of the Windows 8.1 upgrade are available now on the 17th. Okay. And the DVD retail versions will be available tomorrow on the 18th. Okay. Simple. Simple. I mean... <laughs> Why they can't just be both out at the same time, I don't know. But that's, I think, maybe the simplest way to think so of it. So I immediately, when I read that blog post on the Windows blog, I, they recommended going to windows.com on your Windows 8 machine. I did that. It's and let me guess, let me guess, because this is also something that should be hilariously simple. What they described was not what you saw. Well, it said click here, uh, and it yep. took me to the store, but I didn't. To the store, I, which had nothing on it. said nothing about Windows install, 8. Yes. Not one word. Welcome to Microsoft. So I thought, oh well, maybe it'll be yep. maybe it'll be part of my eleven updates that I need to do. I have some updates, no. so I press the update button, and it's been spinning ever since. And that was eight so, in the morning. I, I I spent a lot of time on this today. In fact, I think it's fair to say I have spent today on this. So the way, and I am so tired, my eyes hurt right now. But I, I, if I could also try to simplify this conversation, yes, the way I will describe it is. You have some computer and it has some version of Windows on it. Windows 8, maybe it has the Windows 8 one preview. You could have Core or Pro. You could have Windows RT with or without the preview. It doesn't matter. Any of those versions. Um, there are things that need to be updated before you're going to see stuff. 
And one of those things, I think, is the store. You know, I think it's one of those like kind of silent upgrades ah, that occurs. But, okay. but there are Windows updates that have to happen. Um, your computer has to be tied to your Microsoft account. It has to be one of the PCs that is, you know, recognized as being a, a sync uh, companion, you know, a syncable PC on your uh, on some, your little Mac. Some people PC. didn't do that. I mean, most did. Yeah. <laughs> it was the obvious right. thing to do, but but some people didn't. No, no, I I really think there's a whole host of requirements that have to be met before you see that thing in the store. I don't think that my I know that Microsoft has not listed them out explicitly because the truth is. As the hours go by today, as the days go by to tomorrow, those requirements are all going to happen. Like I, The problem is when people wake up this morning and they get all excited to download this thing, the first thing they do is, God help them, follow the instructions of the Microsoft blog post. And it doesn't work because some of those requirements haven't been met. You know, And it's not really clear what they all are. But I've just noticed across multiple machines a, a bizarre like series of steps I've had to take on some of them just to just to get the store to even come up. So had I had I uh, so I am I guess so had I done everything properly I would have seen a tile that said Windows 8.1. Yeah, so if you in fact right now on that computer I you could possibly do something like this like um, bring up the charms bar and go to settings and click on the power button and it wouldn't surprise me to discover that it says instead of sleep shut down and restart uh -huh. it says update. sleep shut down and restart and update or right. update and restart. Yeah, Does it? no. Uh, probably. No. I'm actually running Windows Update right now, and the reason is I was off uh, gallivanting about the about the world <laughs> on the second Tuesday, <laughs> and so I didn't get the second Tuesday patch. So I'm downloading those right now. Okay. So you see, uh, this is, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like I've spent uh, much of my when I'm not actually doing the thing or writing about the thing, looking at people's questions and trying to figure out what's going on and. Right. It is kind of amazing. I, I have a feeling that if we just all started on this tomorrow, everything would work great because naturally over the course of the day, our computers are just going to download those things. Well, and, and Microsoft might get some feedback and that adjust that Windows.com page to say, okay, here are the steps. Make sure you've done this and this. And oh, there, by the way, there are all kinds of wrong links. There's a place on the, in the, on the Windows.com site that says that there is something called the Windows 8.1 Upgrade, um, ad, not advisor, uh, assistant. And it, it doesn't exist, at least not yet, right? There was one for Windows 8. It doesn't actually link to that. It links to a page that says something else. But coming soon. clearly that thing will be coming. Right. It's just not there now. Okay. Well, maybe it's there now. I haven't checked in the past five minutes. But, right. you know, that's how today has gone. Now, some have reported, I guess Tom, most notably Tom Merritt, our, uh, our morning news anchor on TNT, that uh, he says it bricked his uh, Surface RT. Have, have we heard widespread reports of problems associated with this? Um, we've heard we've heard different things from different people ew. on Twitter. You know, like some people are like I'm, I see a response from a guy right now. I woke up 20 minutes after I started the upgrade. I had a flawless download. Everything worked. It took me you about two hours. I hate people like that. I know. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> it took no, I me mean, about I'm, two I'm, hours from start to finish. Yes, that's a long on time. RT, yeah. Right? Is that on RT? Yeah, on Windows RT. Yeah. Because, RT takes um, hours, and I. Yeah, it took a long I, time. Part of that, I'm sorry to keep interrupting. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think part of it is not RT. I think it, there's, a, I think there's like a, a limiter on the store. Because there have been many times today when I, the store main screen will just sit there with a little spinny, you know, whatever that is, like a progress. Yeah, that's what I was progress. getting for yeah. all morning. Yeah. And so, yeah, and I think I mean, it, what that is, is it's it. trying to connect to give you that little yeah. update right. that lets you click on the tile. I think a lot of yeah. people, you know, it's a busy day. Yeah, that's yeah. Normal. I mean, that, and that's the thing. People are freaking out. It's like, guys, they just released this thing in like 117 <laughs> languages or whatever, and know. you know, 137 countries, and you know, all like uh, like at the dot of an hour. I mean, yeah, it's gonna. It's like the it's what's that guy, um, the comedian who does the skit where he's like, you know, it's like give it a second. It's yeah. going to space. Louis, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. <laughs> you know, it's coming back. To you. It's like just just relax. Everything's amazing like, and nobody's you're like impressed. Like four of the thunder god <laughs> flying around in outer space. Give it give it a second. <laughs> give it a chance. Yeah. You know, the, the part of the problem, too, was everybody's coming at this from a different place, right? Like some people yeah. are coming at it from Windows RT. Some have the preview installed on Windows yep. RT. Some don't. Some are coming at it from Windows 8. Some have the preview installed. Some don't. So there's, except I think the only place I've seen this so far is on Paul's site. There's no one place where you can look and say, which operating system do I have installed? Okay, this is what I need to do. Right. It's, Microsoft never yeah, did a post like that. And the, well, the other thing, though, so the, unfortunately, though, I've also noticed, and again, I think this is first day jitter stuff, but the, the the series of steps you go through to make it happen, 
have actually now varied for me from machine to machine on the yeah. same type of OS. So, for example, there's a step during the setup process where in the store you can see it downloading. There's a, there's a progress bar that occurs, and then it prompts you to install. On Windows RT, the first time I did that, that did not happen. And so I thought, well, okay, you know, it's, and it worked. It, it downloaded in the background. It just didn't prompt me in any way. Yeah. And so I kind of wrote it up that way. And then I did the second RT install. And that time, the progress bar was there. But you had to tap on a little notification to see it. So I thought that was kind of weird. And then I did a VM install. And on that install, the, the progress bar didn't appear. But that was Windows 8 Pro. Yeah. And it was like, what's going on here? I mean, I think it's just weirdness from, yeah, the sheer volume of what's happening. I think and that's pretty, you know, that's... Yeah. It's totally it's been a lot to be of, expected. It's been a lot of fun. How many, what are we thinking? 150 million people are updating all at once? Something like that, right? That's close to that, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. At least it's certainly tens of millions are, are, we're doing it all at one time. I mean, I mean, I, that's kind of a mind boggling amount of data that they've got. To I interacted up. with every single one of them this morning, Leo. I know. And I feel like I did too. <laughs> they're all miserable. I'm telling you, I'm serious. My eyes actually, like, my eyes hurt. <laughs> like, I got up so early today. I know. And it's been so awful. Well, yeah, but I'm going to be an apologist here. I mean, this is, I mean, look, this is No, no, hard, I think you're, it's right. It's right thing to do. do. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and by the way, for whatever it's worth, um, at least on my machines, and I, uh, not every machine I have, but many machines now and some virtual machines, I, I, it's, always, it's always worked. I mean, not for me, at least. I mean, it's, I have successfully installed. I mean, you know, Tom, I don't, I, I didn't hear exactly what his problem was. I think um, it bricked it. I think it's not rebooted. Yeah, so what he needs is Alex's Miracle. Well, what did he use, a, um, a Surface RT or Surface Pro? RT. So Alex has the recovery media that I think Mary Jo might have made for him. He does, yeah. When we were out there, and that will help. That's how he can get. So you, what that. you do is you do the recovery, and then you do it again. Yep. And let me tell you, having bricked mine back in June when the preview came out, that's a fun little process. Yeah. <laughs> you so know, you, there's if you, no... If you, lacked, if you lacked belief in Microsoft before it bricked your machine, um, try it after it has bricked your machine, <laughs> you know, uh, just yeah. to see where your heart's at. Well, and it's, That's an kind, of, it's kind of hard. You have to uh, to create this medium. It's not There's not like a one-button create recovery medium, or is there? You have to... Well, once you've uh, no, there is. Once you've it, it's too late. No but... one thinks to do it, right. right? So on most computers, including Surface, by the way, the recovery partition is on the drive, and, and typically you can just access that. The problem is as you upgrade from version to version, you lose the ability to go back right. to the original version of the OS. And so the reason uh, the recovery media that he has, that Mary Jo had, uh, which actually cre was created because I needed it, right, at Build, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's all con it's connected. Like, um, you know exists because she still had Windows RT, the original version. I had bricked mine when upgrading to RT 8.1 in preview, and I needed to go back, but it had already destroyed the recovery partition. Right. All right. So all, all, all will become well is in the future. <laughs> you could probably go to your local Microsoft store and get one there, but... Right. Uh, uh, well, anyway, I'm I'm running my updates, and by the time this show is over, with any luck, I may in fact. I bet that by the time the show is over, you will see that install tile, and you'll yeah. be off. And yeah, in fact, I might see it soon, because mm -hmm. my uh, my upgrades are almost done. I would just say to people, you know, and we, we can talk more about this, and we can talk more about you know the different ways you can do it and all that. But um, for the people who have been kind of freaking out, because especially people on Twitter where we've been kind of publishing little tips and and so forth, um, it will work eventually. Uh, if you're wait, you know, if you're wondering, like I don't see it in the store, I, uh, what do I have to do? Um, it will work eventually. I, I had that on one of the RT machines. It was really, really hard to get that thing going, and uh, you know, you kind of restart the store, restart the store. Yeah, yeah. It, it it will eventually pop up. I'm doing the first thing. In fact, I think it even suggested this run Windows update. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to yeah. do that, and then we'll see what happens from there. That's the that's the big this, Windows. What is this? The Acer you're using? Yeah, the Acer S7, and it's running Windows 8. Windows 8, pure Windows 8, came with Windows 8. It is a Windows 8 machine, so, okay. you know, pro, obviously. So uh, we'll see what happens here. Yeah. So um, maybe we, at some point we should step through, you know, the different versions of Windows and what you can expect. All right. Um, one, of the, one of the seemingly bad news part of this was that if you had upgraded to the preview before, you would have to reinstall your apps. Right. Um, and we had warned everybody. Microsoft had warned everybody, and we had warned yeah. everybody. But actually, there's a silver lining to this story because um, on I'm trying to think if I've tested this everywhere. Well, let's just say I believe on Windows 8, 
both versions and Windows RT, if you previously upgraded to the preview version of Windows 8.1 and now today have upgraded to the, you know, the final shipping version, uh, you'll get a message like one of those full screen Windows 8 style notifications that says, hey, by the way, you're going to have to reinstall all your apps. And, um, and then you agree and you can, you can upgrade. It takes a little while and it reboots a few times. When you come back to your start screen, everything is the way that it was before. And the, the tiles for the apps that you had installed before are all there, but they have a little install overlay on them. Mm -hmm. And so like you can tap arrow, that. right? Yeah. It's, it's like, like a, a little it's, pointing it's arrow. It's like a, that downward, you know, the, the, the install yeah. arrow. If you tap on that tile, it will install the app. So even though you do have to reinstall everything, at least for the Metro style apps, they're still, you know, they're, well, they're not there, but there's like a shortcut to them. So you can just get them easily. You don't have to go find them. Um, the desktop apps, you you know, you're on your own. Obviously, you have to go do that stuff. But um, I think that was kind of a nice little thing to throw in there, you know, because we've been warning people for a while this was going to happen, right. especially right. in RT, where that's all your apps. I mean, um, you could do this upgrade, and, and you don't really have to suffer too much because you were an early early adopter. So uh, okay. Um, now, the, there isn't a launch event for this, but they are doing a launch event for the Surface, the new Surface 2 today at midnight, 10 Microsoft stores. Uh, no? No. Next week. That's, no, that's the next week. Okay. Next Monday night. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So let me see now. I've done the updates here. Let me see if I got my uh, new store. Yes, that's new. Yeah. And there it is. So what that's I hadn't it. done is Windows Update. So I did Windows Update, got to the, that presumably updated the store. So now I have update to Windows 8.1 for free. At presumably. Time. Presumably. <laughs> yeah. And then Hopefully so. Hopefully it all is there. Well, this is pretty way, which straightforward. Which version of Windows? Hold on. Before you, before you tap that. Um, what does that say? 3.62, right? So you must have, is that like X64 Pro version? Yeah, I don't know. How, how would I find that out? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, well, you, if you really want to find out, you, uh, Windows key plus X and then system. And then it will tell you there. All right, let's see. I've got 64-bit uh, 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 full Windows Touch support with 10-point Windows 8. Does it say 8 Pro or 8? 8. 8, so it's 3.62. That might be exactly the same. I, it I is 3.62 gigabytes on a Windows 8. So it might, with, with there, it says Windows Edition. It doesn't say Windows 8 Pro or anything like that. Yeah, so it's just okay. Windows 8. Yeah. Okay. Yep, okay, thank you. So there, you add that another yet another data point to the Paul yeah, Ferrat Yeah, I, I, I forgot. Database. I didn't write all of them down, so. Um, and then, so I'm going to go back to the store, and I'm going to press download. And that won't be there. <laughs> you know it's there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To download, pressing the download button, and it's got search everywhere, use it your way. It's got some nice little stuff. It says you can keep working, and now it's actually downloading. So that's good. So that was pretty painless. Yeah. Right up to the um, point so, where bricks. Something else that we should mention, because I've seen a few people not realize this, is once you do um, get Windows 8 one final bits, then you should check Windows Update because there yes. have been at least three and maybe more updates that Microsoft's um, developed and is releasing today that are the post-RTM bits. So you first you download the RTM bits, then you go into Windows Update and you look for these additional updates which are going to give you uh, a bunch of fixes and what's called the general availability roll-up that you can apply on top of the RTM bits, cool. just to make it even more confusing. Oh, that's good. All right, general. It never yeah. ends. No, it's good, though. They, so it means, you know, they RTM'd back in August. Right. And they've been still working on Windows yeah. 8.1 since. So they these are updates to the Bing apps and they're updates to some of the drivers and reliability and performance updates. So all of these things are ready. Uh, and you just go into Windows Update and just push them in, and yeah. boom, you got them. Good. Yeah. RTM doesn't mean what it used to be. It does not. It's now mm -hmm. just a, a suggestion. Yeah. It's just, just a step on the path, Leo. It's like a Zen kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, but that would that would be the standard advice, no matter what. When you get a new operating system, then immediately run update to see if there's been any fixes. Yeah, you know how it is. You buy anything brand new, electronic, you right. get it first thing. You, you do plug it in. I think we're all we're do. all used to that now. Yeah, yeah. 
it still kind of bugs me, but yeah, it's yeah. the way. It's <laughs> I know. I was going to. Well, say you know where it bugs me is where you buy a brand new video game and before you could play it, you got Ugh, that uh, every time you've got to re-download it effectively because, well, oh, whoops, we shipped it with plenty of bugs. I, the the best reason to upgrade to an Xbox One is going to be because that stuff's going to happen in the background. Right. I I feel like every time I turn on this console, it's upgrading something. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Uh, lots of people doing this. The download is pr pretty slow, but it's doing it. Uh, Three point six two gigabytes. That's the, sounds like that's the size for either. Some of them are much smaller. You know, thir oh. the thirty two bit versions and the uh, Windows RT version are much smaller, much smaller. than that. I don't. And yet RT up. takes a long time. Well, it did today. I, I'm I'm curious. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I've already. Well, I guess I could blow it away and go back. But I I've, I've upgraded all my RT machines, so. I don't know what tomorrow's going to look like, right. but I, I, I don't think faster. it's normally going to be two to three hours. Right. I, I, I'm sure it's going to be closer to an hour. Yeah, my suspicion, normal. just looking at the way this progress bar is going, is that this is going to take longer than the show to get this updated. <laughs> um, um, maybe not, though. No, I, I, bet we, I bet you could actually... You're going to have to keep an eye on it, though, because um, eventually what's going to happen is it's going to have to reboot, and it, it, the real install takes place while it, during that reboot, kind of, you know, as Windows has been doing for a while, I think the Mac works this yeah, way, too. Yeah. Kind of go into this... Pre-install, yeah, right? Or whatever. Right. You're downloading files and then you, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but but it'll do that automatically, or do I have to watch for that moment? It will eventually do it automatically, but if you are watching it, you can do it much more right. quickly. Reboot now. Yeah. Reboot now. Well, you'll see it. It will. It will put up a kind of a full screen notification. Right. Um. What else? Any other tips, tricks, gotchas, things you want to tell well, the world I mean, that we've without, learned? I don't today? want to get too laborious into it, but I mean, I think one of the discussions should be around what you can do from different versions, right? Um, yeah. And it's, you know, it can get ugly the further away from Windows 8 one you get, <laughs> I think is the way to put it. But, um, you know, Windows 8, Windows RT, not counting those uh, computers that have upgraded to the uh, preview version of 8.1, it's clean. It's a it's a in place upgrade. You know you can right. your applications come forward, your apps come forward, your settings, your personal documents, all that stuff. So that's that's obviously the best experience. Uh, one thing I'm curious about is tomorrow. You know w w when we can get retail media. You know what that looks like because those are like the full version, right? Right. right. Yeah. So we're gonna be, are we gonna be able to do an upgrade with those? I mean, I I, hmm. I think so, but. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to pick one up and see how that works out. And you said rollback. Is it possible to roll back, Or is that something special to that Paul eight, Thorat... Like the 8.0 or yeah, whatever? that Paul Thorat can do and no one else knows how. <laughs> no, it's not that. Uh, no, anyone could roll back. I mean, and the, the way to do it would be to create that recovery media before you install it. Oh. And then you can use that to restore it to the previous version of the OS. Not too late. I, that would be I'm installing right now, so I could do that right now. And we do that by Windows X... No, no. There's um. So actually, I I just linked to this stuff today. The the, the top is it the top article? Yeah, the top article on my site, which is no, that's not it. I'm sorry. The second one down. Um, We're going to win everybody together. WinSuperSite.com. <laughs> I've written articles before. So um, the Windows 8 upgrade guide, electronic upgrade options, because you know we don't have the disks yet. Um, do, do, do somewhere yeah down in the troubleshooting notes at the bottom it says make a restore or repair disk before upgrading and i, I linked it to articles i wrote previously um create this recovery is a, everybody media. should be reading this article before they press that button yeah. right now this is uh, i didn't even know you had this the windows 8.1 upgrade guide electronic upgrade options read this because a lot of your questions will be answered and you don't have to email paul and all of that <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah please don't email me um <laughs> At least not for 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, this is probably just pragmatic to do regardless, right? Because, you know, just in case anything yeah, goes wrong. And nobody ever does this. This is such a good idea. Right. Yeah. Well, we're so used to everything working, you know, that when something does screw up, you know, you're kind of pinned. And that's what happened to me when we were out at, at, in San Francisco for build. I, you know, I had my one Windows RT machine. I'm on the road. I do an upgrade that bricks the machine. And now what? You know, and I, yeah. I think for most people that would be... Life. I mean, that's how things work for most people. Of course, yeah, if I was home, right. it's life. No, if I was home, I would have been okay. I had two Windows RT right. machines, so I could have used the other one. You know, but I had to borrow. So Mary you Joe's could machine. create recovery media on any machine. Yep. It's not machine specific, or is it? Does no, it but it's OS specific. So um, 
this and there's a well, lot of different obvious, versions, right? It's 32 bit core, 32 bit pro, 32, right. you know. Well, actually, that's not fair. I, I, it's probably true that the same recovery media and how would work. Big a, uh, how big a USB disk do I need? I think it's four, is the size. Four gigs? Uh, okay. It's four. And I'm, I'm looking at your article right Eight. now on how to do this. I think it's. So you go to uh, search, start search settings. And I'll look at what I wrote. Create though, a I recovery know. drive. I'm looking at it right now. I'm reading it on the <laughs> That's air. What I'm yeah, you want to read this here? I'll make it bigger for Let's you so you can see it. This Three. says it must be at least 256 megabytes. That it seems see. kind of tiny. It seems too tiny. It seems too tiny. Too tiny. Yeah, it says that on the uh, what? Well, well, hell. Mm. What's this boot camp mm. drive? What is that, Paul? What are you doing this on a Mac? Boot camp. Let's move along, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Busted! And, no, because that's no. how your screenshot. It's easier to do yeah. the production on a Mac or something. No, I, I don't know why that says boot camp. I don't know why. All right, so I'm going to do it start, does. search, settings. See it for boot camp. And there we go. There's settings, and I'm going to hit settings. And you can, and the nice thing is, I can do this while this is downloading, which is great. Yeah, I mean, right now it's just downloading the installer program, so you can keep using your computer. Right. And at some point, you'll get that. You'll, you won't miss it. It's full screen. It's whatever color your background is. It's very bright. All right. Cool. So that's a good. That's good advice for everybody. Make that recovery drive now, even if you're not doing the. Uh, Install. When um, you know when Windows 8.1 RTM came out, uh, whenever that was a month or two ago, I tested other things. You know that I, I've not yet tested on general availability. For example, one of the things that I found did work was um, you could activate Windows 8.1 against your Windows 8 product key. Um, at the time, of course, the only install media that we had was from TechNet or MSDN. So you couldn't use a retail product key to install the product. You had to use your, you know, MSDN or TechNet uh, product key. But if you had a product key that you would, you know, from a purchase you had made previously from Windows 8, you could actually activate against that key. Um, this leads me to believe that you should be able to do the same thing, you know, but with the final version and even install it with your existing key. But that's one of those things I still have yet to test. So there's probably more to be added to this list. And I know I'm going to hear from people who are going to say, well, I have a Mac and I'm running Windows whatever in boot camp or I'm using it in a virtual machine, whether it's a Mac, a PC, or Hyper-V, whatever. Oh, you got to fix your screen, that screen, by the way. It says on my machine, connect USB flash drive, it must hold at least 16 gigabytes. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's because you were doing it on a Mac, it's I think. Slightly bigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So six, it's not four, it's not eight, sense. it's 16. It's got to be a pretty hefty one. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a. I I don't think I have a sixteen lying around, so I'm gonna have to. I'm just gonna risk it here. Oh, I'm pretty sure I do. Oh yeah, most people do. I all my thirty twos and sixty fours are at home. Yeah, this is a thirty. In fact, I th I'm pretty sure I did this. I'm I I think at home I have this. I mean, that's kind of my policy. It would be a bit of a shocker if I hadn't. I just dive right in. <laughs> then everything I goes south. I just sell. do it. I just do it to do it. Yeah, that's weird. So I just uh, checked Windows Update on my Windows RT, and sure enough, there are Windows 8, you know, RT 8.1 updates and a driver update. Actually, there's a, f a system firmware update. Wow. Yep, there is. And you have a, and this is a Surface. Yeah. Yeah, Surface RT. That's interesting. I think it's just the set of updates that are for Windows 8.1 that they did post RTM, right? That's just yeah. what this is. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. I didn't realize it'd be like a firmware. Yeah. Opponent. Coming up in just a little bit, we're in fact, just a few minutes, we're going to talk uh, about Windows Phone with Greg, Sull Craig Sull Greg Sullivan, Greg Sullivan. Mm -hmm. uh, who is a uh, director in the Windows Phone group. Um, and so, you know what, let's do a br let's, uh, we got about eight minutes before we need to call him. Okay. Uh, I want to get a commercial in before then. So you have about five minutes. If there's anything else you think we should talk about in this particular discussion. Yeah, I, I, we should touch on the mini tablet stuff, but let's do that after the... After uh, Craig, commercial, Craig, yeah. okay, or whatever, yeah, whoever, yeah. yeah. All right, we're watching uh, Windows Weekly. Paul Throt, Mary Joe Foley, a Red Letter Day. Windows eight point one is here, <laughs> and are you guys going to get in line at the Microsoft Store in uh, Newton or wherever the hell it is? To uh, in, I almost said it was in Dedham. It's not in Dedham. It's in Boston. Oh, it's not. 
It's not Baston. that one. Oh, no, it's Boston, right? Boston. Yeah, I might go Monday night just to do it. Oh, it's Monday. It's a 20, 20 yeah. for service. 22nd, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For New York, you have to go all the way up to White Plains if you want to go. So you should I just come to Boston. Really you have family here, don't you? I do. <laughs> just make a long week. I've seen enough of my family. We'll this, have a party. Party. <laughs> party. <laughs> <Ooh>. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, our show today brought to you by the folks at Pro XPN. We've talked before about this on security. Now, in fact, Steve Gibson vetted them. He's a big proponent of Open VPN. And Open VPN is a way of creating a virtual private network. You might have first experienced this connecting to your work, right? Uh, businesses often use virtual private networks. In fact, that's where the name comes from, really. The idea being you're at home. But you want to use your office network, so they use a virtual private network that you log into, and then you're connected through an encrypted tunnel to your work, preserving privacy, preserving you know security at work. Now, what happened, I think, over time is people realized, hey, wait a minute, you could do other things with an open VPN or with a VPN solution. For instance, you could uh, ensure your own security and privacy at an open Wi-Fi access spot. Your data would go out of your computer encrypted, tunneled to the server, and nobody could see what you're doing at the access spot. Nobody could hack you. It would be a great way to bypass a Snoopy ISP. If your ISP is, you know, sending you six strikes notices, it would be a great way to uh, eliminate geographic restrictions. Because with a VPN, you don't look like you're coming from your locale. You look like you're coming from wherever that VPN tunnel terminates. Well, this is a company we like a lot that does this as a hosted service. It's called ProXPN. You can go to proxpn.com slash twit to find out more. They offer, offer uh, an excellent open VPN implementation. They have server exit points. So open, in other words, open VPN servers in all over the world. So you could uh, appear to emerge on the Internet in Dallas, Seattle, London, Singapore, Los Angeles, New York City, or Amsterdam. If you, for instance, wanted to watch, you know, iPlayer, the BBC iPlayer, but they say, well, you you can't do that. You're in Dubai. Well, you go to the London uh, endpoint, and boom, you're in London, magically. Um, it is a really good security solution. Now, they have a free version, but the paid version is also very affordable. In fact, $75 for a year, $9.95 month to month. We have a special offer. If you want to try uh, Pro XPN, use the offer code WW20, WW for Windows Weekly, 20, and uh, you'll be getting 20% off, not just for the first month or year of your account, but forever, for the lifetime of your account. That brings the cost of OpenVPN when you pay by the year uh, to less than five bucks a month. For that kind of security, that's fabulous. Uh, they have mobile apps now, which is really great. That means instead of having to use the lesser PPTP on your mobile, you can use their new Android app. They have an iOS app that allows you to use OpenVPN on those devices as well, and that's really great too. Real security. Uh, bypass geographic restrictions. Bypass internet filtering, blocked websites. Bypass Snoopy ISPs. Pro X pn.com not pro vpn but pro xpn.com i want you to understand that that's it's op it's a vpn solution but it's pro xpn.com slash twit to find out more read all about it and then again if you want to save 20 percent for the life of your account use ww20 and of course uh you can cancel any time with the within the first seven days for a full refund so it's a great you know try before you buy of course but you got a week to cancel and if you use WW20, you'll get 20% off forever. ProXPN.com slash twit. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley are here. We're talking about all, well, a lot of stuff, primarily the Windows 8.1 launch today. Downloading now to a computer near you, I hope. <laughs> uh, easiest way, um, well, the way Microsoft's blog entry suggests is you go to windows.com on your... Uh, Windows 8 device, and it'll point you to the right place. I guess it does some checking, or well, that's the theory. If you've been, if you've run Windows Update, you know, if you're fully updated, then you should be, you should do that first. If you're fully updated on your Windows 8 PC, then when you go to the Windows 8 store, you'll see a giant tile that says "Upgrade to Windows 8.1." It's free. 
You can roll back if you create the recovery media. If you haven't done that, do that now. Uh, any other points uh, people should consider? Keep in mind. I, I, I this is an, actually I just thought of another thing I haven't tested um, is the media center bit, and I don't know Mary Jo if you have heard from anyone with media center, but I believe no, I haven't. Okay, I I think that's been fairly seamless for people. So if you if you Windows eight doesn't come with media center, but people then go. No, out but you and could get have it. bought it, right? And I believe that if you upgrade it. You'll get Media Center 8.1? Yeah, well, yeah, actually, there, there have been some minor, I think, probably kind of bug fix type things uh, right. released okay. for Media Center, but nothing, you know, nothing functional. Will but you I, need to enter your key? A number of people want to know, do I have to get my key? Do I need to re-enter? No, you don't have to do anything if you're upgrading, right? Mm -hmm. It's seamless. You just run yep. it. And, no, you know, a lot of times when we do window um, uh, operating system upgrades, I always say do a clean install. This is not a case where you could even. Well, you, I guess you could. You go get the media. Well, actually, that's, so that's, I have, that's my tip. There is a way to do that. Okay. Um, okay. So you may want to do that. We'll save that mm, for the tip. Yeah, you could. I mean, you know, this is one of those weird things. If you're, uh, if you're running Windows 7, for example. Um, well, you have to do it then, right? You, you would, you know, you'd have to buy, you'd have to pay to get Windows 8.1. It's expensive, you know, one hundred nineteen dollars right. for core, one hundred one hundred ninety nine dollars for, for pro, and then you would do that upgrade, and you would lose all your applications, right? right. Um, you know, one of the tips there is if you're going to do that upgrade for some reason, I mean, upgrade to Windows eight, because you can upgrade from seven to eight and retain all your applications, and then do the upgrade to eight point one for free, and once again retain all your applications. Let's get uh, we're going to get Craig's. Uh, oh. We're going to get <laughs> right. Greg. Greg Sullivan on the line uh, and talk to him right now about Windows Phone. But um, okay, ho hold your questions, kids, uh, in the chat room. And uh, anybody watching, uh, you can go to the chat room, irc.twit.tv, and we'll we'll do some more questions about this upgrade uh, later. And we will also do some rumor watch, uh, GDR three, all of that. Um, actually, let's get Windows Phone Director uh, Greg Sullivan uh, on the line. I think we are we are calling him right now. I see. I see uh, the attempt being made, but... Uh, Greg is the small one in the middle, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one not wearing flippers. Uh, all right, well, 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 you know, we're still trying to reach him, so um, I guess we got to... I, I, I pulled, the, pulled the trigger a little prematurely. He's probably using Skype on Windows Phone. Let's talk about <laughs> the features of 8.1. Um, yeah. You know, we've talked a lot about uh, the new UI, the fact that they've added a start button, um, but... but does it improve under the hood? Are there? Am I going to get better battery? Is there any benefit besides just UI improvements? There are supposed to be, right? I, I, I mean, I only downloaded the final RTM bits on on my Surface RT this morning, but I immediately noticed it felt snappier. Um, oh, good. Uh, so I'm I'm hopeful about that. That kind of makes <laughs> sense. I mean, this is yeah. you know an opportunity for Microsoft to push a whole bunch of code. Mm -hmm. That would present. Yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff. to me, the big deal here is uh, there's a couple of things. You know, there's that new the Bing integrated smart search, which a lot of people are going to really like, and a lot of people are going to not be so happy with. Um, this the integrated SkyDrive stuff that previously required you to download an app so you could uh, sync with your SkyDrive storage is now really integrated in the operating system. I think that stuff is cool, and um, you know, but beyond that, it's a bunch of small things. I mean, all of the apps have been improved. And that thing I've been talking about for a while now where they've made it better for people who want to stay on the desktop. And then the, conversely, they've made it better for people that want to stay on the tablet side uh, when it, and run just the, you know, the touch first kind of Metro apps. Um, so it's, it's, I think this is a more successful version of that thing that Microsoft was trying to do before, which is walk this kind of strange line between traditional PC and new wave mobile device. Um, you know, in one system, which is, you know, still kind of a controversial dis, uh, decision, but it's, I think it's a lot more successful along those lines. Yeah. We also should um, mention the, some of the new apps that are in the new Windows mm -hmm. Store today. The real official Facebook app is oh, there. Oh, oh. Don't talk about uh, that one too much. That's my pick. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but there are others that are coming yeah. soon, or yep. if not there already, including, I'll, I'll just give you a quick list, Hulu Plus. Uh, updated Evernote, eBay, Netflix, Nook, Adobe Photoshop Express, Box, Adobe Reader Touch, and Microsoft Solitaire, all updated for Windows 8.1 and out 
today or tomorrow, probably. Thank God that solitaire really needed. You need that. that. Need an update. You want that? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Where, where's my water too? Is available. Oh. Okay. So, good. Yeah. You know we got that going for us. Is it a new API? Is it a new? I mean, why new up? Why new uh, app? Well, yeah. I mean, there are. There, yeah, there are updates to the APIs. I mean, th there's some basic capabilities that are occurring here that are different, like the uh, new tile sizes, for example. So right. you can have. Uh, really large tiles that can provide a lot more information. And I, that's one of the basic advantages of this type of UI that Microsoft is pushing to all of its devices where you don't have to go into the app to discover more about your next appointment. It's on the tile, you know. And a lot of the time, depending on the information, that's all you really want. You know, what are my next three emails? What are my next three meetings? Uh, what's the weather going to be like for the next three days? Like, I shouldn't have to go into the app. You know, in, in other mobile systems... There's, a, there's like a weather tile or an icon, and you tap on it, and then the app loads. You can right. look at the weather, and you leave, and you go do something else. On this right. one, this stuff is all out there, you know? And by making uh, the, the tiles have the possibility of being much bigger, people can configure those things the way they want. And then the things that they want information from can be bigger. Plus, it works <laughs> better on those higher resolution screens, too. A lot of people in the chat room asking about smaller tablets, 8-inch tablets. How does yeah. it, how, do we know how well it works on those? Uh, are there issues there? Well, yet to see. Issues there. <laughs> <laughs> yet to see well, Mary Jo, you, you wrote something about a Lenovo device. I, 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 there are definitely new devices coming, so this is going to yeah. change pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, there. This does this release does support the mini tablets. There, there's uh, the new Lenovo tablet, the eight inch that came, that uh, was announced this week. That's going to be out before the end of October. Uh, and then I think Dell re. Was it Dell? Mm -hmm. No, who was the one who redid yeah. theirs? Acer, right? Oh, no, Acer the redid one, theirs. The yeah. one you hated has been redone. Well, and they fixed the screen. <laughs> right, right, they fixed that's, the screen. That's the problem. That's so now the new version has an IPS screen. Yep. So those, yeah, both those both are optimized to run with Windows 8.1 because Windows 8.1, they fixed some things around portrait mode, supposedly made it work better that, that way, um, and also done uh, some other optimizations for the mini size tablet. But, you know, Microsoft's mini tablet, uh, the mini Surface, that's not coming till next year, but um, that's, that's not because it couldn't have run Windows 8.1 is my understanding, but there's a lot of different things in play there. Somebody's, you know, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I just um, as you were talking, I was looking at the uh, at the apps list on this RT tablet, and I, we mentioned earlier how you you know when you upgrade from a preview. There's Greg. Yes, talking. Greg has arrived. Okay. Do you want? Greg, you, you look like Darth Vader in the dark there. Yeah, we can. I can brighten him up. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> sure. Are you my father? <laughs> you know it to be true. So, uh, Paul, introduce Greg Sullivan, director of Windows Phone for uh, Microsoft. This is Greg Sullivan, the director of Windows Phone for Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. A yes, true, a true professional. I'm a professional. Yeah. So, welcome, Greg. It's good to have you. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Uh, although I was told that there would be discussion of micro brews and uh, Rogers and Hammerstein <laughs> tunes. I think that's actually. In the sweet spot uh, of my area of expertise, I, anyway. I don't <laughs> think we've yet uh, to, to, to plumb the Rogers and Hammerstein. Yeah, anyone. beer, definitely. I'm not sure about the second one. Are you, Mary Jo, <laughs> are you <laughs> hiding a, a secret infatuation with Broadway Ooh. musicals? I, I, uh, I, nope. I missed this. Okay, all right. <laughs> I could sing Oklahoma <laughs> if that makes you feel better, Greg. <laughs> uh, or is that Lerner and Lowe? I, maybe I've got them wrong. I, yeah. I think that's Rogers and Hammerstein. Okay, good. Actually, all right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't you wish to there forever um paul take it to mary joe somebody take the <laughs> yeah, lead here yes i'm sorry so <laughs> somebody right, why take, are you take here? the so, gosh uh, darn lead what have what have you wrought uh, I, I i the short version is that uh, the windows phone team has recently released the third update for windows phone 8 uh, which they're calling update 3 um and I, the cool thing this time around is they're allowing individuals developers but basically anybody who wants it to get it ahead of carrier approval meaning that an update that maybe previously would have been coming in the coming months is now technically available right now if you want it. So maybe yeah, you can talk a, a little bit a, about that. And what bet. have you done? That's a pro program that we um, 
that we launched for registered developers. The good news is, is that it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I myself am a registered developer for Windows Phone, and it's great to go up to App Studio and um, you know, download the SDK. And In fact, there's a set of templates that anybody can, can pretty easily create an app. But we did this program really to provide developers with a way to, to test their existing apps to ensure that they're going to work uh, on updates. And this is a pre-release um, version of the software. So we, we put all kinds of kind of qualifiers and, and warnings. It's, um, you know, you're kind of on your own. It's, it's, not, uh, it, it's not final code. It's, it's effectively the final software from Microsoft um, in this case, although in future, uh, future versions of this program, uh, it may be even more pre-release, um, true beta. But in this case, it's, it's effectively the code that we've finished um, and then have handed over to the handset manufacturers who then will combine their firmware updates, their, uh, uh, their packages, the applications that they put on, um, and then test that and hand it over to the uh, mobile operators who then put it on their networks and check it out. And, and for a given phone operator pairing, will determine that it's, uh, it's good to go, and that's when they start delivering that. But for developers to get their hands on this early, um, we wanted to have this program uh, available, and we're happy to be able to do that um, just this week. Yeah, and this is, I mean, for anyone who uses Windows Phone, I mean, they know this is a big, big deal because, you know, in the past, there were always stories about, you know, Microsoft created up, you know, GDR2, and, and we waited, and we wait, and we, you know, and eventually, like, a new phone comes out, and that has it, but it takes a while for us to get it, um, you know, depending on the carrier, depending on the country, depending on the device, you know, all that stuff. So uh, being able to get this thing really quickly is is just a, an amazing thing. Yeah, a lot of folks are excited about it. And I think one of the things that, um, you know, we maybe could have done a better job of explaining is, is it, we think in terms of updates in general, we, we've certainly invested a lot in this process. And for those of you who've been around a while, you remember back to the, the first update to Windows Phone 7. Uh, technically not the first update because that was a, an update to enable further updates, uh, you may recall. Right, but the, right. the no-do update, the, uh, the thing that brought copy and paste, that took a long time. Uh, you know, we, we demonstrated that early on because we wanted to show that we've, you know, we've built this and it, it didn't make it in the uh, initial release of Windows Phone 7. And it took a long time for that to actually roll out um, broadly. We've, we've invested heavily in our process and the engineering team that actually does the updates. Um, and they've gotten much, much better at this. And we're really proud of the fact now that not only have we delivered in the less than a year since Windows Phone 8 has been out, the third, uh, you know, not insignificant update to the platform, but we've been able to make those available to just about everybody who has uh, Windows Phone 8. Um, the first update went out within a couple of weeks, really, of, uh, not a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Um, we launched in November, and we started shipping the first update in late December, actually. It began rolling in earnest in January. And within several weeks after that, it was available to virtually the entire installed base of Windows Phone 8 devices. Um, and so that was a much, much improved kind of rollout. Um, with the second update, uh, it took a little bit longer. We had more devices in market, a different variety of, of new and, and existing hardware. Um, the testing matrix got bigger. Uh, you know, there were some issues that, that needed to be addressed. And so that one took a little bit longer. But the good news now is that within a couple of months, here we're about two and a half, three months after um, the second update started rolling out, it is available to over 95% of the existing installed base of Windows Phone 8 users. So um, within a short order, we got that out to, to just about everybody. And now, of course, with, with Update 3, um, we have the program for those who, uh, uh, the, for the registered developers, of course, who are excited about getting their hands on it, they can, uh, they can get it beforehand. So not only have we continually updated the platform and, and did a lot of work to keep it fresh, but we've also kind of brought along the entire the entire installed base, which is not something that um, that Android has been able to do successfully um, because they have a much kind of more fragmented installed base and a bigger challenge there. Uh, so we feel really good about that. I think one of the other things that that we've been talking about um, that I think is not as well understood is folks have uh, have asked us about the end user functionality, and I think one of the things that gets lost is if you even go back to that first update. Um, that we started rolling out in January. That update, the, one of the more significant aspects of it was the enablement of the single largest mobile operator on the planet, China Mobile. Before that, we didn't have the, the network technology and the other requirements in place in our platform to, to sell our phones on the biggest 
mobile operator in the known universe. And so that update, while if you're a, a Lumia 920 user on AT&T, you got that update and you didn't see a lot different. The fact that there was things in there that brought Windows Phone to, you know, but billion more potential users is a very, very significant thing for the platform. So as a result, we sold a lot more 620s and, and 520s and the platform began to, to, to in increase its momentum and developers uh, started to prioritize us more. So the benefits to the uh, Lumia 920 user of, of that first update were indirect, um, but still significant because <laughs> right. we kind of brought the, the, it's an investment in the whole ecosystem. And then, of course, by the third update, we're, we got to the point where we're able to do kind of more end user feature work, um, stuff that folks have been asking for, like rotation lock and uh, like yep. text tones and that kind of thing. Um, so you'll see us continue to keep cranking and accelerate on the pace of, of updates and importantly, um, do an even better job as, uh, of bringing along the whole install base, which um, which is something that I think some folks lose sight of. So we're because uh, it's it's important to us. Yeah. What are, yeah, what are the right. things you've heard feature wise that people are liking in GDR three? Because I know that there are quite a few. I'm still calling it GDR three, but update three. <laughs> uh, yes, I know like 1080p <laughs> HD and the fi five to six inch screen size, which we still haven't seen anything use that yet. But I I bet soon. Uh, driving mode, right? Support for quad core arm. Uh, what 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 are you guys hearing so far? What are people liking? Well, there's a there's a few kind of different groups of things. I think number one is the stuff that is 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 kind of hygiene in some respects. It's not earth shattering features like rotation lock, like the like the text tones. Stuff that people have seen on other platforms have been asking us to implement and say, hey, when are you going to have this? And now they're they're happy that we do. One of the things. Um, that's interested me is how much of a response driving mode has received. It's been um, uh, a really popular thing. Folks have, have looked at that and said this is an important area. Um, we're not claiming that it's the you know the ultimate solution for a, for a, what is a big problem in, in distracted driving, but it's an important step in the right direction to have uh, people have some more control and to automate that process so that. Um, when you get in your car and your phone pairs with the Bluetooth audio in your car automatically, it turns on a feature that will reduce the distractions you have on the road. So that feature has been very, very well received in particular from folks that um, don't follow Windows Phone as, as closely as Paul and Mary Jo, for example. But that's, um, that's been an interesting one. And then the third category you, you kind of alluded to, Mary Jo, is, is the things that um, enable new hardware. And uh, as you mentioned, that theoretical new hardware has not been described or announced or unveiled yet. Um, but if it was going to be described, how would you describe it? Totally <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, Mary, Joe jo and I were joking. I'm, I'm getting to the age where um, I often have to uh, reach for my reading glasses and on these theoretical larger screens, that's something that I, uh, I don't have to do as much. Um, but even if you're not uh, old and, near, and, and have, losing your vision like me, um, just about everything that we do with a smartphone benefits from a larger, higher definition screen and more powerful processor. So these new devices, uh, these theoretically enabled new devices, do um, benefit just about everything you do with a smartphone, whether it's media consumption or playing games or reading. Um, a lot of the stuff I do on my phone will actually benefit from uh, a bigger screen and not just because I'm uh, uh, in need of reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Can I put you on the hot seat for a couple questions? I would be disappointed if you didn't, Mary Jo. <laughs> okay. The one I keep getting asked um, is, some people thought Notification Center was going to show up possibly in Update 3, but it didn't. What, what should people expect if, the, if they were looking forward to when they might see a Notification Center in Windows Phone? Well, uh, I have no announcements to make today with respect to the Notification Center, but no, it is something that, that people have asked for. We, have, we built a, a user experience, as you well know, that is, is designed to kind of surface information. The live tiles bring stuff to you. Um, we've tried to make it very easy to, to track the things that you care about and, and have them serviced and brought to you. But we have heard from, from users that a, a way to kind of aggregate that um, and, and bring it together is, uh, would be a beneficial. So uh, it is something that we're, that we're hearing from folks and that, uh, and that we've been looking at, but uh, no announcements today. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> You'll be the first um, to uh, know. Okay, good. 
Um, I also get asked a lot about, um, you know, we, we're seeing more and more Windows 8 and Windows 8.1 adopting things from Windows Phone. Um, you know, we're seeing that those UIs coming closer and closer together. But sometimes people ask the reverse question, like, will we ever see something like Charms on Windows Phone? Like, is that the way we should be thinking about it or not thinking about it? Well, I, I wouldn't. I would hesitate to talk specifically about a given okay. feature and what the implementation is going to be because yeah. that really is is being decided. And I think, um, you know, part of what's going on with the reorg uh, over here that was announced a couple of months ago is um, that some some barriers are being broken down, kind of organizationally, both in the engineering and, and really broadly across the company. So you're seeing um, a different perspective about how. Our products work together and, and a more holistic view of uh, of the, the experiences people want to have and how they how they flow across the different screens that people use so that at a, at a high level and as kind of a general guidance is, is something that we're spending a lot of time thinking about now um, whether or not a specific feature from uh, from one uh, ver implementation yeah. is, is going to show up in another. I, I can't say at this point, but the, the general idea about how, what is the appropriate experience to have on the piece of glass that you happen to be in front of is something that, that, um, a lot of, you know, people are spending time thinking about. And so, um, you know, as, as we've discussed, our platform today scales from, you know, about a three and a half inch screen all the way up to the, you know, 50, 100 inch projector of, of your Xbox. And in fact, the experience uh, is consistent across that from the phone to the tablet to the PC to the uh, to the Xbox on the big screen. Um, and we have one way to kind of log in across all of it, one authentic authentication mechanism with Microsoft account. And we have we have one storage model kind of tying it together, a, a substrate with SkyDrive that lets your stuff show up where you want. And so We'll keep spending time thinking about how to deliver the experiences people want across a range of devices that integrate all these services. So you'll see a lot more, um, you know, kind of integration. I think we're already better uh, than than any other platform provider in terms of the breadth uh, of of that offering. If you think about it as one big platform, um, as well as how tightly integrated. Uh, those experiences are, but we still have a lot more to do and, and that we can do. Um, so yeah, in general, it's, it's directionally, I can tell you that we are thinking about how, how the experience is appropriate for the device that you're on, that there is a, a, a consistency across all of it, um, and that the services just plug in automatically. Um, and so that's, that's where we'll keep investing, but, um, we'll just have to wait and see how that, how that maps out. Yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> How about, um, you know, we keep hearing um, hints, rumors about this unified store supposedly coming to Windows Phone and Windows 8. Um, supposedly, they even talked about this, the powers that be at uh, the Microsoft internal meeting recently. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not going to ask you when because I know you can't talk about that, but I'm, I'm curious more about like what, what is a developer, if you're a developer either building for Windows Phone or for Windows 8, how should you think about what you should be doing if you, if you believe there is going to be a unified store? Like what's the best thing you can be doing to prepare for a time when that may be how, how things look and how users get their apps? Any guidance for developers? Well, I think the, the guidance today is is that we've enabled it, it, we got a lot better in Windows Phone 8 by virtue of really just being on the NT kernel and, and having the the core, uh, you know, the file system, the networking, the security um, fundamentals, the media pipeline, all of those kind of low low level OS components um, be consistent from the phone to the tablet to the PC um, and even all the way up to the you know biggest server clusters so we have a we have a fundamental consistency at that at that foundational level um, we have differences at the API level at the app plat level the ways that we expose the underlying functionality of the system depending on which um, you know which platform you're targeting which execution environment whether it's phone or 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 uh, or, or PC um, uh, the advice to developers is is to to, to keep building and, and use the tools that are available today, 
Um, and, uh, you know, as, uh, as things evolve, we'll, we'll provide more guidance, but I don't think, I think that the advice is today, you can do a significant, get a significant amount of code reuse. And of course it depends on the application. Um, the kind of UX layer, um, is, is unique to the execution environment because the phone UI, the app on the phone is going to look and behave different on a four inch screen than it will on a, on a 10 or 11 inch screen. And that's appropriate. Um, but there already is today a significant amount of code reuse for all of the underlying uh, system level stuff like file system access, media pipeline, the stuff we talked about. Um, additionally, um, the business logic, if you're, if you're doing kind of LOB apps, the, a lot of the logic on the back end um, will be effectively identical. It's really at that UX layer um, where the where the uniqueness to a given execution environment are. So we'll tell developers if you're if you're writing a phone and a tablet or PC app, there already is a significant amount of reuse you can use. Uh, you can do with your code. Um, we have tools and and sample code and and all kinds of resources to help kind of optimize for that reuse and that efficiency. Um, and then uh, the the store thing as uh, when you first said store, I was thinking of. Um, uh, uh, file system, <laughs> not, uh, not marketplace. Um, but yeah, the, uh, this, you know, the store thing is, is a, um, um, you know, we've kept kind of given some directional guidance there as well. Um, and is, and the, the guidance for developers to take advantage of that is, yeah, do the, uh, use, use the tools and the guidance today to gain the efficiency that you can. Uh, and as, as that evolves, you'll be well set up to take advantage of it. Okay. Should I have we, should we keep the question as well? Yeah, sorry. I keep, Given that I keep the dominating. exception not in the uh, playoffs, um, I, assume <laughs> <laughs> I assume you're rooting for the Red Sox. Uh, so here's the thing. I was pulling for the Pirates um, in the in the National League, and, you know, because uh, I'm a Cubs fan. So the any any uh, anybody but the Cardinals, um, I'm happy for. Mm -hmm. I, I view them as the Yankees of the National League. Um, yeah. And and so it's 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 kind of weird for me to be rooting for the Dodgers over them in, in the American League. I kind of feel like Boston's had theirs. My brother lives not. Uh, my brother lives in Michigan, and so he's been yeah. pulling for the Tigers. So, sure. um, as simpatico as I feel with the uh, long-suffering Red Sox fans, um, you know they've gotten they've gotten two just in the last you know few years now so i guess but i think we could all agree it should have been three and <laughs> <laughs> oh man paul come on this is a your personal agenda has no place here <laughs> and now Look, i'm not trying to drag it out of you i'm just i'm just it's just sort of a universal thing we could all agree on you know? <laughs> yeah sure well i should you know on the uh on the walls of my office are a couple of uh of Frame pictures of uh, of Wrigley Field that my uh, my kids have given me, and um, I'm just hoping I live long to, enough to see uh, to see them win it all. So sure. then I'll be happy. That's I could agree with that. You're gonna be living a long time. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm not sure what you're asking for, really. You might be just yeah, saying, well, they're one eternal century life. This, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe if I live another hundred years. <laughs> Well, I'm glad. To, thank you so much for uh, joining us, Greg. I know you got to run and uh, and so forth, but uh, nice to nice to get it straight from the uh, the director, the director's mouth. My my pleasure. Thanks a lot for having me. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, anytime. Let me uh, let me know. I'll be uh, happy to uh, to rejoin you guys and uh, and answer any other questions. Now, did you have any um, uh, any uh, caller questions that you wanted to take at one point? We talked about that. As, uh, we could do that. Oh, about GDR, to the wolves sure. a little bit. Chat room questions. Well, they they're, they want to know if uh, Fiddler on the Roof or Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you the were eternal debate. Yeah, if you were a librarian on the roof, would the Music Man <laughs> save you? No, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. Um, can you say anything about Cortana? They really like this idea. Uh. I am a Halo fan. Good. Good start. Um, <laughs> Good start. Yeah. I uh I like the uh the the increased role that Cortana had in the in the uh in the latest take on that franchise. Yes. yes. Um very politic, and, uh, yes. I think there's some some cool stuff going on there. Okay. <laughs> so on behalf of the world, Greg, 
Cortana yes. is a way better name than Siri. whatever you're probably going to call it. Or <laughs> Tell so Me. If or... you could keep that name, I think a lot of people I think would. it's a great name. Certainly appreciate that. I will uh, I will share your feedback. It's a code name, though, right? I mean, you're not going to call it. You can't call it Cortana in public. She was barely clothed. <laughs> um, Cortana's a great, uh, great character in the Halo franchise. Digital, yeah. yeah, she's digital. She wasn't. She's not bad. She's just drawn that way. <laughs> she's also just assembled that way. Assembled that way. Um, you know, most of the questions we're getting through the chat room are, are things that you're not going to say anything about. Like, it was kind of bad timing to get Greg to come on the day that Windows 8.1 came out, too, when you think about it. <laughs> well, here's one you can answer. What's the story with the teeny-weeny guitar on your uh, wall? Oh, I wanted to ask that question, too. <laughs> that is a... Uh, uh, that's a that's a gift from my from my buddy. I play uh, uh, I play mu music with a few friends of mine, and uh, he he um, got us all little uh, miniature guitars. And so uh, does it play? Uh, it actually well, it's it's got all of the it's got strings on it and everything. It doesn't actually make any sound though. But yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah that's my Is little. That so you uh, can play blues on the world's smallest guitar. <laughs> exactly. You hear this? <laughs> when, this? When I'm feeling sorry for myself. You hear this? Right. Except, you know, except this time you get your fingers up. You know, you do the. You know, and the stuff they want to know. What about YouTube? I know you're not going to respond to that, but uh, what about YouTube? <laughs> well. Yeah, I mean, we just republished kind of an, an, an earlier YouTube app. Um, you know, it's been interesting to see the lengths that, um, um, well, it's frustrating because we want to deliver the best experience to end users. And I think, you know, there's there's kind of universal agreement that the app that we built for YouTube for Windows Phone did it was was great. It was highly reviewed. It delivered a great experience. We tried to do everything we could to, to work with Google to implement the requested changes that that they gave us guidance for. Um, they didn't make it easy, frankly, to, to implement all of the changes and then kind of, um, I, I suppose you could say, move the goalposts a little bit. Um, so it's just been kind of weird because, and, there, and to me, there's a pattern here. We're interested in making happy customers and we want to deliver product that people like and, and find value in and, and, and will use. And one would think that um, that would be kind of, that motivation would be shared by others who, who have mutual customers and, and want to um, provide them with things that they find valuable and like as well. But um, that doesn't seem to be the case. And I think there's a pattern through you know, the, the quote-unquote accidental disabling of maps through, um, you know, the, the email protocols and, and through other things. There's a pattern of, of, tr of, of almost actively trying to disadvantage a, a, our platform. Um, so we're, it, it's, been, it's been a little frustrating, but we're, you know, we're doing the best that we can to, uh, to deliver good experiences for our, for our mutual customers, and um, that's all we can do. That's a good answer. You were more candid than I expected. That's good. I, I probably said way more than yeah. I should. Have, and I'll get it later. <laughs> we like you, those you were very nice about it. <laughs> no, but I think that's great. I'm glad to hear uh, that put that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, how's uh, so? I'm going to ask a question. How about that? All right. Because uh, here comes Nokia. Is that going to? First of all, this has to be approved to the U.S. and by Finland, and so you know, probably months off, if not a year off. But are you already starting to gear up and think about that? How does how does that change what you do? Yeah, in the in the near term, for those of us who are you know uh, have have products to ship and, and things to do, and um, it it hasn't really changed anything. And in fact, it can't uh, until regulatory approval right. happens. So right. until it's it's actually a done deal, uh, it doesn't really change anything day to day. Now there are, there is a set of people obviously thinking um, long and hard about how to do the integration pending regulatory approval. So once that does get okayed, um, how will things work? And, and there's folks that are figuring that all out. Those of us who are um, just working on the day-to-day -day stuff, though, um, are really full steam ahead, business as usual. And in fact, um, that's kind of how it has to be until right. until the, the deal gets approved. From, from legal point of view. But it has to yeah. be exciting to have the, uh, to the, the thought that you can have hardware now that you control, just as you do with Surface. Yeah, the the prospects are very exciting, and then the reasons for the the acquisition that were announced um, when it happened was really to kind of accelerate this whole business along the same uh, directionally. It's one of the things that we're proud of is the fact that when um, you know when Joe got up on stage at Mobile World Congress in in 
2010 and, and unveiled Windows Phone 7, we had a set of principles around which we designed the user experience and, in fact, our whole business end to end. We changed our approach to the mobile business in in every meaningful way. And those changes were based on some very solid principles that we established, and we haven't varied from those principles. The idea of taking control of the user experience, of having it be consistent on every device, on having even the most affordable phones deliver that high quality experience, on kind of amassing a bunch of Microsoft assets and, and letting them light up your, your start screen in the live tiles. So that, those principles, if in fact, many of them have begun to kind of spread not just throughout Microsoft, but, but even influence, I think, the whole industry. And, and I think you're seeing iOS 7 and the flat design and mm -hmm. they're you know they're getting away from skeuomorphism so there are some of the some of the key principles that we established with Windows Phone initially um, are not only consistent and and unwavering from our standpoint 3 years down the road but they're beginning to kind of catch hold broadly um, so that's that's gratifying and i think one of the cool things that will happen as a result of the acquisition is is that we will accelerate the business, and that will be good uh, for anybody who's in the Windows Phone business. So um, it is it is exciting. And in today's world, the notion of being both a first party and a third party platform provider um, is not that novel, right? A few years ago, people assumed it was kind of a truism. You had to pick between being vertically integrated uh, or a horizontal platform provider. But increasingly, um, that ain't the case. And in fact, I'll argue that maybe in the future, the best platform uh, is the one that benefits from the advantages of being vertically integrated and a first-party provider and then delivering those benefits horizontally to other manufacturers. So you see Google buying Motorola, you see Microsoft making PCs with Surface. Um, the idea is not anathema it, as it once was. You can be both a first- and third-party platform provider. And in fact, going forward, that might be the best way to do it. And, uh, and I think that's kind of the, the thinking here. And uh, one more from the chat room, if you don't mind, guys. Uh, this is Scott Michaud, who's asking uh, with regard to uh, web apps, uh, what about device APIs, device-level APIs for web browsers to access hardware like uh, the accelerometer and vibration to keep web apps at a parity with native apps? Are you interested in having web apps um, become a platform? Yeah, I think, you know, there's, a, there's an ongoing debate in the industry about the the model for for when um can the battle between kind of native and and an abstraction layer right. and i think you're ta what you're talking about effectively is an, abs an abstraction layer right. Right. um or some some effectively some type of runtime that that provides some of the universality that has uh is kind of the holy grail of of app development and and i i, you know, I just had my 23rd anniversary at microsoft and in the my first or second year at Microsoft, um, I remembered the discussions about, um, you know, uh, app, app to app communication and, and kind of the notion that we would have um, the portability from an app standpoint. And there are the same trade-offs that happened 20, 30 years ago uh, are true today. Now, it is true that the, the um, you know, Moore's law has made processors better. We got fast networks. And, and so some of the, some of the costs of that abstraction layer are mitigated by better hardware and, and better standards and, and, and um, better layers of com compatibility at that abstraction layer. But you're still not explo fundamentally exploiting the underlying uh, platform and the underlying hardware. And your app will, not, will be disadvantaged if it doesn't if it can't fully exploit the underlying platform so the notion that um a uh, that that programs written to an abstraction layer that doesn't fully exploit the underlying gpu or or system um can be as good for many scenarios they can and and it's this is kind of the philosophical debate on on app development is is can you get the uh, abstraction layer good enough so that the costs associated with it um, uh, are outweighed by the benefits of the universality. And I, I think, um, you know, it's an ongoing discussion. Right now, we, we th feel pretty strongly that, that um, our native, the native implementation is going gonna, is gonna to win, especially for, for, uh, for some of the key scenarios that people care about. Um, so that's, you know, that's going to be an ongoing, an ongoing discussion uh, when, on, with the app plat guys. So. Good. 
You guys want anything else from uh, Greg, or should we let him go? <laughs> we'll let him go for now. All right, off the hook, Greg <laughs> Sullivan, director of Windows Phone. Hey, it's been great talking to you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Yeah, yeah, thank you very great. much. Great, great stuff. Take care. All right. Thanks. See you. Moving, uh, moving right along. I tell you what, while we readjust, press the buttons, change the things, let me do a little uh, commercial, and uh, we'll come back with more. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, Windows Weekly. As always, uh, talking about the latest with Windows, Windows 8.1 shipping today, and so that's a big topic for us. Always with me and Paul, the big topic is, uh, of course, Audible Books, audible.com. We're big fans. 150,000 titles now, and... Uh, I'm, I was curious if you were going to recommend this, Paul, and I'm, I'm dying to read it. So here's the deal. We're going to get you a free book. You know, that, that's, that's the deal. We're going to get you a free book. And the question is, what should that free book be? And, of course, with 150,000 titles, it could be pretty much anything you want. And there are all sorts of wonderful books uh, at audible.com. We're huge fans. Uh, but Paul uh, is recommending, I think this is a good one, the new book about Amazon and Jeff Bezos. Have you read it yet? No, I, I, I haven't. And it, I, the reason I wanted to recommend this is because it's an industry book and it's new and we don't have enough of these, I think. so. Well, Brad um, Stone is great, by the way. I, yeah, I, I know him. I mean, He's a, I'm a fan. Um, yep. This is called The Everything Store, Jeff Bezos and the Age of Amazon. I have read at least one book about Amazon, you know, but it seems like as we move through time, you know, Microsoft was a big topic for these kinds of books around the antitrust right. time period. Uh, Google was temporarily a big deal. Apple, of course, has been a big deal. Um, and, you know, we, a couple of books now on Amazon. And so, you know, these things kind of move along. So I'm very curious to read this. Me um, too. I can't wait. Mostly because I'm hoping it's up to date. Because I think a lot of the early stuff, you know, we all know he started a store and they made a list of the 10 top items and books were the best one. And that's how they started on that path. But what I'm really interested in are their technology initiatives, the cloud computing stuff that they do, the devices, the Android platform stuff. Um, and I'm really hoping it has some of that in there. And so uh, I wanted to get this in there because it's brand new and I've got a lot on my plate from a book perspective, you know, both Audible and Kindle. But um, I knew this would be of interest to people. So I, I think that I've read some excerpts, I think, from the book. And I listened to the excerpts. I mean, uh, the, the, the Audible reading is one of those kind of stiffer versions, I would say. Um, yeah, sometimes but, they get those business books, they get them yeah, from Blackstone. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, oh, this is Hachette so. published this one, so... Let's hear. Well, let's listen a little bit. Maybe it's not horrible. Uh, this is Desco, as its employees affectionately called it. I don't know. It started they, in 1988. You see what I'm saying? David yeah, it's like that old school. Pete, Pete Larkin has been smoking a little bit too much, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's Hesh. Well, the other it's thing is, like, unfortunately, audience. this excerpt isn't about Bezos or Amazon. It's about right. someone, I guess, who they tried to hire, and he started some kind of a supercomputing company or something. Right, but right. the actual excerpt is about something else, so it's, it's kind of a strange excerpt, too. What I've read from the book has been great. So... Yeah. I'll tell you what, we're going to read it. You could, too. Absolutely free. <clears throat> we're trying to get you, your, you know, figure out what your first book's going to be. If you visit audible.com slash windows, uh, you can get that first book uh, free. I'm very interested in, in these uh, Playtone uh, yeah. things. Now, this the things they carried, uh, Tim O'Brien's amazing book about Vietnam vets um, is incredible. Not vets, but uh, on the ground. And Brian Cranston... Uh, narrates it, so I'm I'm He's thinking, great for that. yeah, of course Walter White from uh, Breaking Bad, and I'm thinking this is going to be one definitely on my list. Um, these are these are books about the American experience um, that Audible's uh, highlighting. Some really good stuff. Gosh, I love some of these books. This is the problem. <laughs> you get a credit, but you know it's choosing. There's so much good stuff. You'll never run out. At least I can say that. I want you to visit Audible.com/windows. You're signing up for the gold account. Your first day, first uh, 30 days are free. Your first book is free. Cancel in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing. Book is yours to keep forever. How about this one? Uh, you might have seen the movie Captain Phillips, but how about Richard Phillips' own story, A Captain's Duty, about getting captured by Somali pirates and freed by SEAL Team 6? Wow, that's got to be dramatic, right? Uh, Malala has her book, I Am Malala, the girl who stood up for education and was shot by the Taliban. I mean... Fiction, nonfiction, science fiction, history. There's an endless array of entertainment, of learning, of fun waiting for you. And I have to say, without Audible, I probably would have, I don't know, I would have driven off the road. It saved me from my uh, my commute. It saves me at the gym. I can, I can spend a little extra time on the treadmill because I'm enjoying myself. Audible.com slash Windows, your first book.
is free. What is that? Is that me? <laughs> is that me? That's you. Making that sound? <laughs> Hello, Dolly. Who knew uh, that uh, Greg was a uh, an American aficionado of the American uh, musical? You learn well, something about Greg every day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He seemed like a, he was kind of forthright. I hope we didn't get him in yeah. trouble. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's what I like. And and you know what's funny about that? He's he's the guy who coined this year "Shut Up and Ship." That uh, was him. I love it. So sure. it's funny that he is being forthright. <laughs> after well, saying, "Shut Up and Ship." Yeah, that was that. I'll, I'll tell you. Let me tell you one Greg Sullivan story because I, I I love Greg and I go back years and years with Greg. But um, Microsoft in. Uh, in the years between Windows XP and, and you know and Vista, of course they they had some tablet releases, they had you know media center releases, and then Longhorn was happening, and it was taking a long time, and they had to try to figure out this kind of stopgap thing. So they came up with this initiative inside uh, uh, about Windows XP and, and how they were going to do like a, it was like a second edition kind of a thing. Like they were going to they were weren't sure how they were going to ship it. They were like reimagining Windows. You know they they knew they had to sort of relaunch you know Windows XP. And then they, they, they ended up not really doing it that way. And um, I was at the event for that was basically the event for this relaunched version of XP. It was sort of like Windows XP plus Service Pack 2 plus new versions of all their media apps and all this kind of other stuff. And I said, and I was talking to the, the PR guy and I said, so I said, this is that thing that I, I've been writing about that you will never admit that really existed, right? And the guys go, well, you know, we, Microsoft as an organization is always trying to think about how we deliver yeah, things yeah, to yeah, customers, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And he's like going on and on and on. I'm like, hold on a second. I'm like, Greg. He's, Greg's walking by. And I said, this is the thing. And he goes, yep. <laughs> that's and what I'm looking for. I looked at the PR guy and yep. I said, that's how you answer a question. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. Just, but he's a director. He's been at Microsoft 23 years. He yeah. can do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he just, it was just funny. And I was just, I said, you know, See, it's simple. It's there are guys simple. like that in a lot of these organizations. I think a Matt Cuts at Google have been there since day one and have a certain more certain amount of freedom that others do not or lack, or at least uh, mm -hmm. a sense yeah. that they can get away with stuff. And those are the sure. ones you want to talk to, frankly. Yep. <laughs> uh, because they'll 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 well, you get the kind of PR runaround. Thing yeah, they don't do that mealy mouth PR thing that I yeah. we all hate so <laughs> dang much. So uh, you, Paul, wrote an uh, extensive uh, Windows uh, Phone 8 Update 3 GDR3 preview so people can find out. Yeah, you can check that out. And I've been writing articles since then that go into each of the articles. Uh, I'm sorry, in, into each of the new features. So um, that'll probably be like a week's worth of stuff by the time it's all said and done. Yeah. But and a lot been, going on. There. You've been using it, but people are going to get it soon? Anyone can get it right now. I mean, that's the trick. So he... You know, Greg, uh, for good reason, is very careful to couch it as, as a developer release because it is. Um, but as he sort of, uh, you know, said, it, this is actually the final version of their software. Yeah. And it's, yeah. yes. So right. the the sort of general public available version that may come out in the months ahead will be combined with carrier and handset updates, firmware, drivers, whatever. But the Microsoft part of it is done. And if you want it now, you can get it. Right. And... Um, would there Not be a that. disadvantage to doing that, or you would still get the carrier update when it gets pushed? Yeah, so th there are potential disadvantages. It's it, again, it is the final code for Microsoft, so it's not like it's a you know it's not a bait. It's not a high risk situation, but it, it could. I, and I want to say I want to be clear about this. It could not will, but it could void your warranty. Yeah. Um, you know, I got to be honest. I, I I think when you buy a phone from a uh, from a wireless carrier and you're on this two year contract, you don't have a lot of rights anyway. And I'm not trying to push people toward installing this, but let's face it: if you break your phone, you're not getting a new phone like the one you had. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's you know. So the the warranty, such as it is, uh, you know, I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything, but right. it's not that great. Right. So, I, I this to me is a very high quality upgrade. I think anyone listening to this podcast could do the go through the steps to install this. It's very simple and uh, would have a very high quality experience. You can't go back. I mean, so that's one of the downsides right. is you can't right. go back to. GDR2. Um, you can only go forward. Speaking As of, must we all. That's good of, life advice for everybody, really. <laughs> you can't go home again, kids. It's a, it's a metaphor for life. Yeah. Speaking of which, I, my install on Windows 8.1 is about this far. So I think I've... I've so what, what color is the screen? The screen is still white. Oh, it's still. Oh, you're not even close. To oh that. no, it's downloading still. This it's is, just downloading. This is so. What I'm saying is, it's like. Oh, that's terrible. Here's that's the happening. bar. 
Yeah, Here's where I fun. am. <laughs> yeah, we'll see this next week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we have fast, way, we have good bandwidth really in here. So. Part of the install. <laughs> right. This is just yeah. the yeah. download the bits. Yeah. Okay. So it's a bit, the server's busy right now. Yes. Yeah. A lot <laughs> of people trying to get it. Yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah. Uh, free version of uh, Microsoft Office, huh? That's cool. If wait, wait, we skipped some stuff. Oh, we skipped yeah, some stuff? Sorry, yeah. Let's do the rumor good. thing. Rumor watch. Like yeah. That. yeah the, you know, I like rumors. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is kind of funny coming after Greg being on, on the show because, you know, like like you pointed out, Leo, there are a lot of things he can't talk about, even, even though he is forthright. He can't talk about futures, right? right. So right. I, I wrote a post this week about... Now that Windows 8.1 is out and now that Update 3 for Windows Phone 8 is out, what comes next? And, you know, Microsoft's not talking about this at all, but I've been kind of pinging around asking my sources. And uh, I'll tell you what I hear is coming next after this. So supposedly the next big date when, when operating system releases are coming from Microsoft is spring 2014. And we talked about this last week, I think, on the show, where there's going to be Windows Phone Blue, um, which is Windows Phone 8.1, probably, the next thing that follows Update 3. That's supposedly coming in the spring of 2014. And then there's supposedly also an update to Windows 8.1 that may or may not be called GDR, or it may be called Update. I don't know what they're going to use as a term, but it's going to be something that comes out right alongside uh, Windows Phone Blue. So that they're trying to bring together these two operating systems and bring them a little bit closer together I don't think this is where we'll see the unified store yet, but you might see something like a more unified dev platform at that point. Uh, then, you know, a lot of people have been speculating, would there be another release of Windows itself next fall? Because supposedly they're on an annual update schedule right now for Windows. Up, uh, for Windows. I've been asking that. I hear no. I hear that Microsoft's now going to be moving to a spring timeframe for Windows. And so that the next version of Windows that we might see after Windows 8.1 and this minor update, the next real version or the next major version will be not until spring 2015. And whatever that is, it sounds like it's going to be some kind of, an, of a hybrid between Windows RT and Windows Phone OS, uh, like we've been kind of speculating on the show. It might just be called Windows, uh, but it's definitely going to be something that takes a little bit from each of those two platforms munches them together, and that's where you're going to start being able to see something that's wow. based on like a Windows Phone OS core with Windows enhancements. But this is for the desktop. For the desktop, for everything, for tablets, desktop, um, that'll run uh, on ta everything from like a 7 to 10 inch tablet up. Um, wow. Yeah, so this is going to, it's going to get a little crazy, but you can, you can think why this is happening. They have this new unified operating system group at Microsoft now. The person running that is Terry Meyerson, who's been running Windows Phone. So you, you think, you know, after the Windows team has had a lot of power, I think their, their power is going to wane a bit inside Microsoft. And now the Windows Phone team is going to get more powerful. So, you know, it's going to be a combination of politics and practicality. And this is what you're going to start seeing happen. You're going to see Windows Phone OS being the base for, for whatever comes forward as the mobile OS from Microsoft. Uh, so it's it's going to get interesting in the next year plus. It, it, it's going to change a lot in terms of how Windows is made, what it looks like, how it works. And, and, and you know, it's not so crazy. Microsoft's just trying to keep up with all the changes in the market. The, you know, mobility is the key now. Tablets are, the, are becoming a more dominant phone, form factor. Phones are becoming more dominant form factor. So, you know, for the years when PCs were were the thing are yielding now to when phones and tablets are the big thing. So it's it's going to be it's going to be pretty cool. I don't know what the code name is yet for whatever follows blue, but we'll we'll work on that. Paul's been That's, saying this was going to happen. He's mm -hmm. smiling now. <laughs> I'm scared. Don't shoot the messenger. I, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. So oh, there will no more be a RT and Pro. Uh, it'll all be just when, well, uh, Mary we Joe. I you know it, the it's one Windows, right? I mean, yeah, one it's Windows. All supposed to be one Windows, right? The the you know this makes Windows users feel really squishy. I mean, this, this is a weird thing yeah. for people. If you are used to the desktop and like the desktop and don't like this mobile emphasis and don't like the touch stuff. You know, this kind of conversation is not what you want to hear. But yeah, even in Windows 8 and RT today, you know, we, 
Mary Jo and I and you and I and, and people in the press and, and, and bloggers and so forth, you know, we need some way to differentiate between this new stuff and the old stuff. And so the old stuff is easy. It's the Windows desktop. The new stuff, you know, different people have different terms for it. I still call it Metro. You know, uh, David Pogue calls it Tile World. You know, we all have little names for it. But you know what? From Microsoft's perspective, that is Windows. And, and that the differentiation is that's Windows, and the Windows desktop is the desktop. And it's, it's, like, it's like the thing that was Windows is like something else now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if you weren't already uncomfortable about the whole mobile thing, that's got to send a little shiver down your spine. So, uh, you know, that's kind of how Microsoft perceives it. And that's how this stuff is changing. Wow. So. Wow. Again, just the messenger. <laughs> Don't wow. I, you know. <laughs> but, but that yeah, is a, that's huge. I mean, if you thought Windows 8 yeah. was a big shift, this is uh, yeah. this is yeah. huge. Yeah, and yeah. by the way, you know, this week, uh, people, you know, based on what Mary Jo has written and, you know, based on these stories we've seen about the, the integrated Windows store, you know, the one Windows store for both Windows uh, and phone, you know, people have written me uh, a lot in the past week and it, it, with questions along the lines of, do you think that the future of Windows is Windows phone with some stuff brought in from Windows or is it like Windows with some stuff brought in from Windows phone? And it's like, guys, it, it, you know, <laughs> it's not really yeah. important to get this specific. It's just Windows. You know, yeah, and um, and people are like freaking out over the nuances of this stuff. But um, is this? Yeah, what, but this isn't. So this is not a surprise. You guys just go. Oh yeah, of course we knew this was happening. Well, no, we're trying I, to. Re this is uh, the, the captain of the ship is trying to remain calm in the face <laughs> of the storm. But you know, you got you might want to move to the boats. That's all we're saying. I mean, you know, this. Uh, uh, you know, you know no, I mean, you know, this is safe for everybody. Paul, most so. people don't listen to this show. In the world, yeah. we're working on that. Uh, and in a year and a, a few months, uh, they may get a little bit of a, a shock. Yeah. Right. You know, the well, part we right. don't know is, uh, is there still going to be something else called Windows that's different from this thing we're talking about that, it, that still ha obviously has a desktop and, and looks a lot like Windows 8.1? And then maybe this hybrid thing we're talking about becomes for mini tab the OS for mini tablets and phones. You know, it may skew like that instead. But yeah. in in a way, we're kind of get a lot of us are getting what we wished for. Remember when when Microsoft first was talking about what should be the tablet OS? So many of us said oh. it should be the Windows Phone OS, right? Right. And by the we way, what a comeuppance this is, really, because uh, know. you know I'm one of those people. I, I had been arguing for probably years uh, by now that you know they had this thing. It's mature. It's great. I would love to have a bigger uh, tablet device running Windows Phone, yada, yada, yada. And now it's like, okay, we're going to do it on Windows Phone. And it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it is weird bridging the gap between the desktop yeah. and this mobile stuff because they're really two different, completely, you know, completely different things. Well, there's a big difference in screen size. There is. Yeah, sure. Right. It sure. seems to me Windows Phone was designed for a small screen. Initially. Yeah. But, you know, again, as these things evolve, right. Windows Phone so, is being evolved up. Windows is being evolved down. It's happening right now with the 8-inch devices. Right. Yeah. Um, they're going to meet in the middle. Right. So like it won't a, look like the Windows like Phone OS cup. we have now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll be like Windows Phone OS with a bunch of stuff on top of it. So it won't just be what we see now as Windows Phone OS. We don't know what the stuff on top of it part is. Yeah. It's nougat. <laughs> so <laughs> That's no, so this may um, be more relevant for developers than it is for end users. Well, eventually it's going to be relevant for everybody. But, yeah, I, I, it is something we're going to have to deal with. And, you know, you're always going to hear first from those people who can't see how that transition can happen, the people that use Photoshop, you know, the people who are developers. Right. Um, right. People use, like, high-end CAD cam or video editing software or whatever it is. I mean, if, and, yes, uh, uh, those will be the last to go if they ever go. I mean, I, you know, I don't know, yeah. you know, I'm not, we can't see the future. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know exactly, but I, you know, clearly the mass mainstream of computing is heading toward these little devices that we can't stop staring at when we're out in public and, you know, that people love these things and this is kind of where things are going. And I'm going to retire before that. <laughs> yeah. I'm obviously yep. a dinosaur. Uh, interesting. But, I mean, this is yeah. the process Microsoft began uh, several years ago. I mean, it's not a surprise, really. Really, really. But it's still, 
A hard the part that's spot. surprising, it's funny, I was just looking back at last year and what happened last year at Microsoft and how all the things that happened in October and November. And it's kind of crazy to look back now because so much has changed in the past year. You know, last year they launched Windows 8 in October. Um, they launched Windows Phone 8 right after that. And then Steven Sanofsky was gone right after that. It was like one thing happened after another, after another, you know, and all of these things together, I think, are what, are bringing the changes that we're seeing now. It's a combination of things that happen personnel wise and things that happen product wise. Uh, it's like shock so waves I, from a tsunami or something. I know. It's like in one year. Or after, so what do you call the, those Trump, yeah. what do you call it? Aftershock, you know, from an earthquake. Yeah. Okay. Fun stuff. I know. Do you want to re change the name of the show? <laughs> well, it's still Windows. Too. Still Windows. Yeah, it's still you know? going to be Windows. Whatever it's they get. It's not your grandpa's they... Windows. No. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, yeah, right. It is like Oldsmobile, right? Hopefully not exactly the same end game. <laughs> it's not your but they, Windows. You know, they try to modernize the brand and all that kind of stuff. It, yeah. it's, it's tough when you have a, a brand that sure. is a, sure. a legacy, you know. And you want to change it before it's all over. I mean, you want to make that shift while you're still on top. Yeah, that's the hardest thing to do, right? Yeah, I mean, right. It, yep. Wow. I, I admire, I, I, I've said this before, I admire what Microsoft has been trying to do. Uh, I may not agree with the end result, but I do admire their guts. Their, their you know, the one thing they're, uh, you know, unless something changes, and by the way, every, anything could change, but the one thing they do still have, I mean, for all of the device baloney and cloud services, yada, 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 you know, when you want to sit down in front of a screen and type, Windows PC is still with the way to go. Yeah. You know? And it's uh, it's yeah. still a much better experience, and you can contort iPads into doing that. You can no, use a no, Chromebook. Yeah. You, you, you could use an Android device, maybe. But but you know, ultimately, when you want to be productive, it's right. it's still right there. Right. Anything else you want to say before we uh, go to our uh, tip of the week? No, the rest of this stuff is junk. Free uh, free, <laughs> free office student advantage program. Go get it. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, well, if you're if your educational institution is participating in the what is it? The education version of Office 365. That's uh, nice. They can so, now give it away to students for free. That's nice. Kind of like yeah. uh, Google Docs. Uh, well, know, kind of, except this is Office. It's office. Office. Right. It's, right. You know, right. It's pretty good. Uh, Paul Thorat, your tip of the week, my friend. So I'm going to add one in here because something better has arisen <laughs> since the show started. But um, we, t we touched on my tip and software pick earlier in the show. So the tip of the week is before you get into any of this upgrade stuff, make sure that you yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. do the – oh, no, I'm sorry. This is a get a 16 tip. gig this, USB this key. Tip. This is a good tip. No, I'm sorry. This is, this is different. So people ask, you know, I have multiple computers and – I want to install, you know, I want to go from Windows 8 to Windows 8.1, but I don't want to do this 2 to 3.62 gigabyte download. Oh, yeah. for Good one point. Of them. Yeah. Can't just download it once and yeah. use the install media. And uh, actually, you kind of can. I'm going to, I need to experiment with this and write it up. This sounds familiar to something that happened with Windows 8, but basically there's a page on Microsoft.com. I've got a link to it here. I've been tweeting it today and I'll, I'll, I will put it into an article soon. But what it allows you to do is run a, a web installer it, with an existing product key to Windows 8 or Windows 8.1. And you can choose whether you're going to make install media for 8 or 8.1. And then you can download the ISO, you can burn a disk, you can make USB media, whatever it is. Um, this is what people have been asking for. This is cool. I believe I need to experiment with it, but this happened. I found out about this right before the show. Can so. I use the product key that's on that sticker on the bottom of my laptop? You should be able to, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So when you run this, what it's going to do is bring up what looks like the Windows setup dialog. It's purple, you know, the new Windows 8 style one. Yeah. Uh, it will require a product key, and it will go from there. But there are separate versions for 8.1 and for 8. Um yeah, so I need to look awesome. at this. I, I think the way that this works, and I, I could be wrong about this, but I believe that, if I remember from the previous version, if you're running it on a 64-bit version of Windows 8, you can only create 64-bit install media, I think. So if you wanted 32-bit, you'd have to run this from a 32-bit machine. But um, I think that's how this works. But it, it this should do the trick if you need to do that kind of thing. Uh, and it is not burning that serial number into the download. You can now use that no. on other machines. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's just to make sure you qualify for the download. Right. Oh, that's yep. great. So do that. Uh, 
That might even yeah. be faster. Now that I need ISO, to test it. what I want to do is um, get a Windows 8 retail product key from a box, you know, from a boxed version of software. Try that against the 8.1 download, which I think is what a lot of people want to do because they just want to do a clean install of 8.1. So. I believe that's going to work. But I if I have an OEM PC with, uh, somewhere, this is that That might actually still work, too. That would be something where I'm going to test all of it. So I just haven't done it yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if that worked, too. Somewhere that information is available. Well, somewhere. remember I said, uh, you know, a couple of months ago when the MSDN and TechNet versions came out, the download you got was basically yeah, this same ISO file, right? Yeah. But the difference is that you could only run setup if you had a TechNet or MSDN key. You couldn't do it against a retail key. Right. I believe that this version is the one that will work against retail keys. So you could use your, your retail key, which I'm looking at right now. It's in the system information. Get the file, then go from machine to machine and get the serial number for that different machines and just install there. Yeah, I mean, if you bought, like, I don't have one right in front of me, but if you bought, like, the boxed copy of Windows 8, you know, you open it up. You could use that, too. It's a little, too. Right. It's, a little hard. it's got the key on it. Right. Set. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Good tip. the software. What's that? Good tip. Yeah. And, not and that I, secret key, <laughs> that secret page you're going to put that you've tweeted it. I see it here. I mean, it's a long URL. <laughs> uh, yes. It is. Um, the, the title of the article is Upgrade Windows with Only a Product Key. Um, and that's the name of the page, yep. too, by the way, is Windows 8 Upgrade Product Key Only. Well, I mean, right. I, the, the article I'm going to write is actually going to be called something like. Oh, I see. Um download a windows 8.1 iso or something like that because i think that's the point is people want to know how now to this, do that. does this wipe your apps is it a clean install well so the, the point of this is you could use this to do the install but you're not going to you, what you're going to do is run the installer it's going to download the iso and then you get an option where it says do you want to install it or do you want to take the iso and do something with that you say i want to take the iso create install media you're not going to install it this way you're going to just use it to create the media okay yeah. So I, I got to write the article, but that's the basic gist of it. Got it. Very good. So that's probably yeah. a good way to go if you have even two to install. Yeah. Uh, Why download yeah. twice? <laughs> sure. Right? Especially well, you, maybe you inst install it from work. I mean, uh, create the media at work and then bring it right. home where you, you know, upgrade it home. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had used uh, Facebook for Windows 8.1 as the software pick of the week, and it's it's still a good pick. I, you know, anyone who has been using Windows 8 knows, you know, we don't have Facebook, so now we have Facebook. Um, the only th the only comment I want to make about the app is I kind of like the way it looks because if you're familiar with how Facebook today looks and works on, you know, iOS, uh, Android, or Windows Phone, you know, you've got that timeline view in the in the middle, and then you can swipe over to get your kind of uh, user-centric commands, and then you can swipe over to the right to get the list of your friends who are online that you can chat with. And because of the widescreen nature of a, of a Windows screen, you get all three of those columns in one view, which is actually pretty cool. And if you uh, decide to snap it, then you just get that middle view like you would on a phone. So it's, it's actually kind of a nice-looking app. It's not, it's not uh, you know, perfect or anything, but it's, it looks and, work like, and works like Facebook mobile apps. So kind of a cool one. Um, the one that I don't have in the notes, though, that I think people will be interested in is Microsoft recently announced and today delivered um, remote desktop apps for iOS and Android. And so RDP, yeah, yeah, yeah. They let you control a Windows-based PC from you know, iPad, a Windows phone, uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. an iPhone, an Android handset, whatever. And so I've just downloaded them on my devices while we were doing the show, but I haven't, I obviously haven't played around with them yet. I've been kind of busy here, but... Uh, after the show, I'll play around with those. But the way to find them, because the problem is if you go to the Play Store, if you go to the uh, App Store and you search for a remote desktop, there's like 137 different uh, entries. But the Microsoft one is called Microsoft Remote Desktop. And if you search for that, that will help you find it uh, more quickly. Okay. Mary Jo Foley, your, uh, your Enterprise Pick of the Week here. Yes. My Enterprise Pick of the Week is SQL Server 2014. Um, this week at the SQL Pass show, Microsoft announced that CTP2, which is a community technology preview 2, is available for SQL Server 2014. And so the, if you remember, SQL Server 2014 is where Microsoft is doing things with in-memory database technology being built right into SQL Server. And with the, with the CP, CTP2 update, they're doing a bunch of things to enhance that in-memory uh, online, online transaction processing, 
um, and the in-memory OLTP database functionality. Uh, they're also doing some things around taking advantage of clustered share volumes, um, doing some new technology uh, additions around uh, transaction throughput and lower latency for OLTP applications. So it's just basically an update to the uh, first CTP that came out earlier this year. Uh, we don't still know when the final version of SQL Server 2014 will be out, but I've heard a uh, rumor uh, that it may be e either very late this year or early 2014. So if, you, if you're somebody who's been kicking tires on SQL, uh, the next version of SQL Server, you might want to go grab this CTP2. Excellent. Excellent. And so I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I just installed the, uh, that's like my, my, my Windows Server on an iPhone. That is cool. Oh, wow. That is cool. <laughs> How funny is that? Yeah. That is great. Very. That is funny. <laughs> oh, sorry. So it works. It's, it works. It works. And your code name pick of the week. Yeah, this is a really funny code name. So last week we talked about Bittersweet Shimmer uh, yeah. being a code name, right? Yeah. That was the code name for the uh, Nokia firmware and uh, updates that, were, that they delivered on top of GDR2 for Windows Phone. And I don't know if you remember, but I said Bittersweet Shimmer was actually a code name for a code name. <laughs> Uh, and I didn't know what the original code name, well, the second code name was, but Bittersweet Shimmer is the code name for code name Black. Uh, um, yeah, isn't this weird? So the real code name for what everybody's been calling Bittersweet Shimmer is Black. And so now we know no Nokia's on this whole color theme, right? They had Amber, then they had Bittersweet Shimmer slash Black. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what the next couple code names are from them. But you can guess they're going to be colors. Crayola so colors. I know. We've got blue. We've got black. It's like we're just we're going to go through the whole uh, box of uh, well, however many. What's the many big box? Is it a thousand? I mean, there's. I know, right? It's huge. We've got plenty of <laughs> code names there's here. Plenty so it's, of it's colors. appropriate, right? Because you black out when you have a stroke. So it's kind of <laughs> close to what I was thinking of yeah. last week. You know? See? Yeah. See? There you go. Yeah. It, it all has a, a reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the weird code name of the week, Black. And finally, for those of you with celiac disease, there's a beer. Yep. <laughs> so, again, I was realizing I've never, I don't think I've ever done a gluten-free beer pick of the week, but there are people who cannot drink beers, uh, regular beers, because they are they have celiac disease or gluten intolerant or other reasons. So, so, so could, beer's not made with wheat necessarily, but uh, it's made with <laughs> barley and hops. Does right. barley have well, gluten? Uh, that's a very good question. I think it does. I believe it does. Okay. Um, but so this is made, made with, with sorghum. Sorghum. If right. you've ever wondered beers what sorghum with... is. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> well, no, you don't know. But at least you know what you can do with it. Yeah, you don't want to know, right? Wow. Uh, but the, yeah, I, I had a taste of this beer. It's a beer called Alchemist Celia Saison. Uh, I had it this week because one of my sisters actually is gluten intolerant and she wanted to drink a beer. Um, so this is a really decent choice. It's a Belgian style Saison. They make it with sorghum. Um, it's made by uh, Alchemy Brewing. I think they do it with Ipswich Brewing as, as a partnership. And it tastes it tastes pretty much like a Belgian Saison. It's 5.4%. Mm. So if you're ever somewhere where you're like, hey, I want to drink a beer. I don't want to drink a cider or a wine, but I don't want to have the gluten. Give, give this one a shot. It's cool. not bad. Celia Saison from Ipswich Ale Brewery. And I think that that brings us to the close of today's exciting episode of Windows Weekly 8.1. Actually, uh, because it's like a touch screen. It's killing, by the way. Whatever you're doing is killing your killing bandwidth. Your bandwidth. <laughs> so stop it. <laughs> He's so excited about RDP. I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop remotely administering my server. <laughs> There you go. That just fixed it. Sorry it fixed, it fixed it. Yeah. So it must be a big bandwidth hog. That's funny. It probably just killed the battery on this thing, too. Yeah. Oh, that's another thing to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Paul Therott is at the super site for Windows. A good place to go if you want to know all about the 8.1 upgrade. Pros and cons, ins and outs, ups and downs, overs and outs. Will it wipe my apps? One never knows, but... Paul does, and that's why you go to the super site for Windows. <laughs> uh, Mary Joe, I think about <laughs> wiping your apps. Mary Jo Foley is uh, at allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's where she blogs about the Microsoft and gets great scoops like this one about the future of Windows. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. That's why you listen to this show each and every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 1800 UTC. We do it live on twit.tv. If you want to uh, listen to After the Fact uh, audio or video, we've got that on demand at twit.tv slash WW. Better, though, subscribe. Anywhere you can get to podcasts, you can subscribe to this show, and you'll always get the latest version automatically. Windows Weekly. Thank you, Paul Thurot. Thank you, Mary Jo. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. 